Drew with MMA Assault, and uh, I'm here with Victoria Leonardo. Uh, Victoria, you got a big fight this weekend for uh, a Dragon's Tale at the Shreveport Convention Center, That's right? right? That's right. Um, do you know who you're fighting? Um, I'm fighting, her first name is Lauren. Simple. I believe. She spells it just like LT does, like uh, Lauren Gator. Okay. Uh, and she's out of Texas. Um, as far as I know, she's never had an MMA fight before. Okay. And so I'm just grateful to welcome her to the cage. Uh, and what a way to enter the uh, the wonderful world of MMA. You got to fight her on your first fight. You got your hands full. Uh, now, so one of the questions that uh, Demetrius, our, our promoter, who we are glad to welcome to Shreveport, uh, wanted me to ask you is, uh, when did you first uh, start competing in martial arts? I was actually, I was about 11, 12 years old when I first started martial arts. I studied Kung Fu, so my, my first martial art that I studied. Um, I did that for a little while yeah, as a teenager and then um, kind of broke away from it and re-entered it as an adult and got my black belt in that. And then I felt like I just wanted to fight full contact. And so that's when I transitioned over to boxing and wrestling and jujitsu and yeah. boxing. I've seen a couple of your, your videos from tournaments and demonstrations and some of the stuff that she was pulling off was sick. <laughs> um, now, uh, what made you want to become a fighter? Um, I'm just really competitive. I just really like it. I, I always liked sparring as a kid. And I just, I guess it's a, a way to prove to myself how tough I am. At, at first, now it's more like, at first it was like, okay, I want to prove to myself that I can do this. And now it's like I see more and more of the technique side of things and the things I need to improve. And it's just like this ongoing process that never ends. You're never going to be the, you, you can be like maybe the best in your, your weight class, but even then there's some, going to be somebody coming up behind you and there's going to be ways that you can improve as a fighter. And to me that's just, it's fun. It's fun to, to think about that stuff, to continue improving and to continue training. I really do enjoy training. There's some people that they enjoy, they don't really enjoy training, but they like to fight. But I'm, I mean, I like, I like to fight too, but I really, really enjoy training. I, I mean, even if I didn't fight, I would still train. Okay, okay. What does martial arts mean to you? What does it, what does it mean to you to, to step into that cage, or even with, say, the traditional martial art? You know, what, what does martial arts mean to you? Um, it's, a, it's a lot of different things. It's everything from self-defense to a way of life. There's a certain way that we have to eat and train, and then there's that mentality. That's what I really love about is the mentality. The, okay, I'm going to better myself. I'm going to be the best version of myself that I can be. I'm going to try to improve continuously. And it just becomes a way of life, and it eases into all other parts of life. A lot of times when I'm teaching, I can reference, hey, when you're if you're trying to train for this, you've got to you've got to do this way. You got to be diligent. So we're going to be diligent the same way. Or um, you can't give up. You know, if you get knocked down in a in the round, you got to get back up and fight again. So it just transitions into so many other parts of life. As well as the the respect exactly. and you know the uh, the sportsmanship. Um, I've seen very few. MMA fights to where, you know, that it ends with them pushing and shoving back and forth, yeah. you know. Usually there's always that show of respect and, you know, that's something you learn in martial arts as well, right? Exactly. Okay, and um, so without giving away too much of your, your game plan, because we don't want to do that, uh, what, um, can, you, can you give us like kind of a, a little sneak peek of kind of what you've got planned for this show? Um, I'm trying to think of how not to give my game plan away. I mean, I'm definitely going to feel her out. I'm going to feel her out standing first to see where I want to go. See where, see where it goes? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, do you, do you know if she's a, you know, is she a stand-up fighter? Is she, is she pretty well-rounded? I'm not sure too much about her. I know she wrestled in like high school or college or something like that. 
and she's got a little bit of wrestling background. Um, it seems like in the pictures of their gym that they do some kickboxing and they're kind of an MMA gym. So she's probably got she's probably gotten all aspects of the game in her training. Okay. Now, um, as we all know, or some of you may not know, <laughs> Victoria trains here out of Karate Mafia. Um, you do some boxing with Jake the Men as well, right? Uh, what does it uh, What does it mean to you to be able to, to train with uh, what I refer to as probably one of the best striking coaches in North Louisiana, in, in Jake the Men? Um, you know, people like Andrea, people like Andy Wynn. Um, I mean, that that's got to drive you to you know to try to, to keep up with those guys. What what does that mean to you? I mean, it's, it means everything. It's just it's a huge honor to have these coaches that know the game so well. They've had experience um, in the cage, in fights. It's not like they're just, you know, they just watch some MMA fights. Everybody that's an MMA fan that watches UFC fights thinks they know everything about the game. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. But it's different to have someone who actually is, has been there. And I feel like all of my coaches have, have been there at, at good levels and were, were, were good at what they did. They weren't just some, you know, person that got beat all the time. They were greats in their own time. And then I have training partners that are, you know, at that, that pro level. And I feel like that gives me a huge advantage to have uh, girls to spar with that are, you know, yeah, I'm I mean, not. I'm not the one coming into the gym and beating everybody up, and I never want to be that person because then, you know, how do you get better? Yeah, I want to be yeah, that person right. that I come and I get my butt kicked every once in a while yeah. on, on a daily basis, and then I succeed more in the cage. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've got King of the Cage champion right. Andy Wynn. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, you've got Legacy champion Andrea KGB Lee. Right. I mean, you, you've got guys in your corner like Donnie Aaron. Right. Um, you know, who has coached and trained many countless champions and, and, you know, countless high-level competitors. So, exactly. yeah, that's, that's a really big that. deal. And uh, is there anything else? Do uh, you have any sponsors, um, anything like that? You want to shout out to your kids because I know you're a teacher. Um, anything like that before we wrap up? I don't really have any sponsors, but, uh, yeah, I guess I'll say, hola, mis estudiantes. <laughs> Oh, I, teach, I teach Spanish. So. Ah, okay. Okay. So, <laughs> Hopefully wait a minute. they understand that. Wait a minute. Now, you said no sponsors? Job. I don't think. Yeah, I don't have any sponsors. <clears throat> I need some of those eventually. We need some of those. <laughs> if, uh, you know, if you don't know, after uh, after Saturday, you will know. <laughs> Y'all need to get behind this girl. Show her some love. Show her some support. You know, without without that support, you know, it, it's hard to, uh, to rise up in the fight game. So... Let me do a uh, hit her up. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Victoria. We thank appreciate it. Pleasure yeah. as always. And, uh, you know, we look forward to weigh-ins on Friday and uh, getting to see you throw down on Saturday. Excited. <laughs> all right. MMA Assault is so in your face. It should be illegal.